This is Dr. Maniac versus Robbie Schwartz, chapter 13. <clears throat> but, but, I sputtered, you said you were going to help me find Sam. He turned some dials on a big control board. Red lights flickered. Machines started to hum. I shall keep my promise, he said. He turned to me. Know what really honks my horse? No, what, I said, unable to take my eyes off the scrabbling, snapping scorpions. <clears throat> People who get tense about me keeping my promises, he screamed. He pulled his arm back and smashed his fist into the wall. The wall cracked. Muttering to himself, he dusted off his hands. <coughs> then he strode over, picking up, picked me up, and set me down in front of a TV camera. Stand there, kid. Don't move, he said. No problem, I whispered. What are you going to do? He pushed more keys on the computers. I'm going to interrupt all TV channels and websites in the city, he said. Everyone will have the pleasure of watching the world's best-looking supervillain, me. I didn't say a word. I didn't want to make him smash the wall again. I just wondered if he really planned to help me find Sam. He stepped behind the camera and raised the lens a few inches. Then he moved in front of it. He stuck out his chest, swept back his cape, and cleared his throat. Hello, everyone. I am the Purple Rage, he announced. He motioned to me, and this is a kid named... He thought hard, gazing into the camera. Then he turned to me. What's your name, kid? Robbie Schwartz, I said. He waved a fist at me. Is your dad Bucky Schwartz, the guy who owns the dry cleaners on Spring Street? Last time I brought my tights in, he shrunk them. No, my dad is Norman Schwartz, I said. He's a lawyer. <clears throat> the rage turned back to the TV camera. Sorry to interrupt your day, everyone, he said, but I want you to watch me as I drop Robbie into a seven-foot-tall case of stinging scorpions. Huh? I gasped. This is your plan to help for helping me? He moved his face up close to the camera lens. Let this be a warning to Dr. Maniac, he boomed, and to anyone else who dares to challenge the purple rage. Then he grabbed me under the arms and lifted me off the ground. Whoa, wait, I cried. What about your promise? Is this your plan to help me find my brother? Of course, he said. When your brother sees you are about to be stung to death by these scorpions, don't you think he'll escape from Dr. Maniac and come rescue you? Uh, maybe there's a better plan, I cried. The rage didn't reply. Instead, he raised me high above his head and tossed me into the glass cage. Chapter 14 I landed in a sitting position. Scorpion shells squished and crackled under me. Before I could move, scorpions rolled their tiny dark shells over my legs. The creatures never stopped moving. They felt warm and dry and prickly against my skin. I struggled to stand, but I slid and slipped on wriggling hard bodies. <clears throat> I cried out as a scorpion scrabbled over my waist. I tried to swat it off me, lost my balance, and fell onto my back. As soon as I was down, they swarmed over me. Their shells clacked and bumped as they covered me. Pincers swiped the air, snapping wildly. Oh, help, I muttered. And then I remembered two words that sent a cold shudder, shudder down my body. Scorpions sting. Yes, one sting from a poisonous scorpion could kill. So far, they were climbing over me, covering me, crawling and snapping. One sting, just one. Carefully pulling a scorpion off my chest, I struggled to my knees. I pressed my hands against the front of the glass case. On the other side of the glass, I could see the purple rage. He stood in front of the TV camera. <clears throat> he kept pounding his chest with his fists, talking away. Get me out of here, I shouted. But the glass muffled my voice. He didn't seem to hear. Or care. Why didn't I create some heroes, I asked myself. Why did I only create villains? Ow! I pulled a prickly scorpion out from under the back of my t-shirt. Two scorpion pincers snapped at my arms. All around me, it sounded like scissors snapping, snapping, snapping. One sting and I was dead meat. Even if Sam was watching this somewhere on TV, even if he was somehow able to escape from the clutches of Dr. Maniac and come to my rescue, he'd be too late. I knew I had to break out of the case. The purple rage wasn't going to help me. I had to escape on my own. But how? I beat my fist against the, against the glass. <clears throat> no, no way I could break it with my hands. Maybe if I lowered my shoulder and rammed the glass with it. No way I could get any speed. I was knee-deep in scorpions. Maybe if I dropped onto my back and kicked the glass. No, I couldn't kick it hard enough to break it. Scorpions wrapped around my waist. A pincer reached up and snapped at my neck. Missed me by an inch. How could I escape? How? Suddenly, I had an idea. A frantic, desperate idea. My only chance. Chapter 15. I batted away 
a snapping scorpion. I struggled to my knees. Then I gathered up all my strength, reached both hands up, and jumped as high as I could. I grabbed at the top of the case. It was seven feet tall, above my head. No way I could climb out. But I pulled my head up above the edge, and I shouted at the purple rage, You geek! You cream puff! You wimp! <clears throat> he went on talking into the camera. He thumped his chest and talked about how angry he was. You dumb creep, I shouted. You fat wimp. That got his attention. He turned to me. What did you say? You baby, you worm, I screamed. You're no match for the incredible Dr. Maniac. He stomped up to the case. His eyes flamed red and his face his eyes flamed red and his face turned deep purple. Know what crunches my credenza? He boomed. You do. How dare you? You're pitiful, I cried, hoisting myself up the top of the case. You're dirt. You're roadkill. His eyes bulged. His mouth flew open. His nostrils flared and his teeth began to chatter. I waited for his head to explode. Instead, he let out a roar. Face the power of my breath of fury, he boomed. The purple rage sucked in a deep breath, so deep his chest popped out like a beach ball. And then he blew his breath of fury, a hurricane force wind at the case. The glass shattered and shards crashed and clattered in all directions. Scorpions went sailing out of the cage and flew to the wall, flailing their pincers. The force of his breath made me do a backward somersault. I toppled out of the cage onto the floor. It took me a few seconds to gain my balance. Then I spun to my feet. My escape plan had worked. I was out of the case, but now I really had to escape. Snarling like an angry dog, the purple rage dove for me. With a cry, I grabbed two scorpions. I heaved them at him and took off running. He let out a roar. I felt his breath of fury on my back. It pushed me out the door into a long underground hallway. The hall was lined on both sides with big color photos of the purple rage. As I ran past them, his face stared out angrily in picture after picture. I heard his thudding footsteps behind me, catching up fast. This really gripes my goatee, he bellowed. Come back, kid. I'm only trying to help you. Help me? Help me feed his scorpions? I reached the door at the end of the hall, twisted the knob, and shoved it open. It led into a wide dressing room. <clears throat> As I ran through it, I saw open closets on both sides. Hanging in the closets dangled pair after pair of purple tights and bodysuits. A small closet at the end was piled high with purple boots. The rage thundered after me. I grabbed a handful of boots and tossed them into his path. He stomped over them and kept coming, screaming and snarling. I found another hallway and ran faster. A dark wooden door stood at the end of the hall. Gasping for breath, I flung the door open and stepped through. My feet kicked air, nothing, be nothing beneath them, no floor, no ground. Whoa! I let out a startled cry. My hands flew above my head as I dropped straight down. I dropped hard into a sleep darkness, into a deep darkness, and landed with a splash. Icy water rose over me. I held my breath as I sank into it. A sewer. It didn't take long to figure out I had dropped into a deep, fast-flowing sewer. The sewer water was thick and lumpy, like cold pea soup. I thrashed my arms and legs and struggled to stay afloat. My hands splashed against chunks of rotten garbage. Oh, it smelled like weak old vomit. I started to choke and gag. I reached for the sewer wall with both hands, but the current swept me up and pulled me away. Was that a dead rat floating beside me? No, only a rat's head. My stomach lurched. The current pulled harder, carrying me into darkness. I crashed against the sewer wall, bounced off, tried to kick away. Crash again. The putrid, disgusting water splashed over my head. I felt myself sink under the, the surface. I tried to pull myself up, but panic froze my body. I couldn't think, couldn't move. My chest throbbed, couldn't breathe, drowning. I'm going to drown, I realized. Drown in this putrid, swirling gunk. <sighs> Chapter 16. Finally, I got my legs moving. I kicked hard and rose to the surface, sputtering and gasping. Shaking the thick, gloppy sewage from my eyes, I spotted something up ahead. Something juting from the sewer wall. A ladder? Yes, a ladder. I could see it glowing in a beam of yellow sunlight. A way out. I held my breath as the current carried me closer, closer. I made a desperate grab for it. Missed. Grabbed again. This time, I caught the second rung. Holding on with both hands, I pulled my body up from the water. Yes. Yes. My cries were hoarse and weak. My shoes slid off the slimy metal rungs. I held on with both hands. Gasping for breath, I lifted myself up, rung by rung. It seemed to take forever. 
My body felt like it weighed a thousand pounds. Finally, I reached the top. I hoisted myself through a sewer grate and onto the street. I pressed my hands on my knees and struggled to catch my breath. Water rolled off me. My wet t-shirt clung to my skin. I pulled a pukey brown blob of goo out of my tangled matted hair. I smelled as if I'd been sprayed by a thousand skunks. Wiping sewage off my face, I pushed my hair back and gazed around. The street sign on the corner read Wayne Street. Hey, I uttered a cry. I was only two blocks from home. I didn't have the strength to run, so I half walked, half dragged myself across the front lawns all the way to my house. As I trudged up the driveway, I thought about Brooke. She probably escaped those security guards, I decided. She's probably safe at home by now. The front door swung open as I limped up the, fr the front walk. Mom stepped out, her dark eyes wide with surprise. Robbie, she cried, where were you? She studied me up and down, then she pressed her hand against her cheeks. Oh my, she murmured, have you been swimming? No, I choked out, it's a long story. I, Robbie, you stink to high heaven, she cried. Why did you run away? What on earth have you been doing? I wanted to tell her everything, but she didn't give me a chance. She grabbed me by my hair and tugged me into the house. Go upstairs, she ordered. Take off those disgusting wet clothes. Take a shower. No, take two showers. You reek. I've never smelled anything so bad in all my life. I, I can explain, I choked out. Mom, some very weird stuff happened to me today. Not now, she said. Go take a shower first. I can't believe you wandered off with your brother Sam missing. But the phone rang. Mom hurried across the room to answer it. She began talking softly. After a few seconds, she turned pale. Her shoulders slumped. She shook her head. Mom, what is it? I asked, hurrying over to her. What's wrong? She set down the phone. I don't believe it, she murmured. What? I cried. What happened? That was Brooke's mom, she said. Brooke is missing too. Chapter 17. I spent a long time in the shower. I soaked myself over and over again. I wondered if I could ever wash the smell off my skin. The shower gave me time to think about Brooke. She came with me to the TV station. She followed me in that wild chase up the stairs to the roof but she never made it to the roof. Did the TV security guys grab her? If they did, they wouldn't keep her for long. So where was she? Should I go back to the TV station and search for her? I dried myself off. I smelled my arm. No trace of sewer rot. Thinking about Sam and Brooke, I walked into my room and began pulling on jeans and a clean t-shirt. Did the purple rage take Brooke away? No, no way. She never stepped onto the roof. The rage never saw Brooke. I shook out my wet hair, then brushed it back with both hands. As I passed my desk, I saw that my laptop was on. I squinted at the screen. What was that? Something I'd never seen before? I leaned on the desk and lowered my gaze to the screen. Huh? A gasp escaped my throat. I stared at the comic strip in bold colors. I recognized the character, Dr. Maniac, drawn in my style, but new. A new Dr. Maniac comic. My mouth dropped open in shock as I started to read it. What's up with this? I cried. How can there be a new strip? I didn't draw this one. Chapter 18 The strip showed Dr. Maniac standing on a city street. His leopard skin cape fell behind his shoulders. He raised a gloved fist at the reader. I'm going to kidnap every kid in the city, he bragged in the dialogue balloon above his head. Every kid in the city, one by one. And I'm going to make them ice skate 24 hours a day. It'll be the biggest ice show in history. In the next panel, Dr. Maniac had an evil grin on his face. Do you know how much money that would bring me? He asked. You're crazy, said the character beside him. I'm not crazy. I'm a maniac. The evil supervillain boomed, and my giant ice show, all singing, all skating, is going to make me the richest maniac on earth. I scrolled down to see the rest of the comic strip. In the next panel, Dr. Maniac bellowed. I'll call it Maniac on Ice. I love it. I love show business. Ha 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 ha. Then he pulled two kids into view. Leaning onto the desk, staring into the glow of the laptop screen, I cried out in disbelief. Sam and Brooke. He grabbed each one of them under an arm and took off. He flew them to a large brick building at the edge of town. The building looked familiar. I knew I'd seen it before. A sign on one wall read, Public Swimming Pool. Danger. No lifeguard on duty. My heart pounded as I kept reading. Dr. Maniac carried Sam and Brooke to the indoor pool and dropped them on the side. They were surrounded by yellow-tiled walls, no one else there. I stared at the pool. The water had been frozen. It was solid ice, a skating rink. Dr. Maniac handed ice skates to Sam and Brooke. Lace them up tight, he ordered. Start skating back and forth. 
For how long? Sam asked. For as long as your nose, Dr. Maniac exclaimed. Then he tossed his head back and laughed his hyena laugh. That doesn't make any sense. You're crazy, Brooks, Brooke cried. As crazy as a monkey in a meatball factory, he screamed. Ha 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 ha. I've got a million of them. Sam and Brooke laced up their skates. They had no choice. Then Dr. Maniac pushed them onto the ice. They started skating the length of the long swimming pool back and forth. Dr. Maniac grinned again. That will keep you too busy, he said. 24 hours a day. The audience will love it. Now I'm going to add all the other kids in town in our skating troupe. What a good show. Ha 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 ha. Leaning forward, Sam and Brooke skated side by side. They kept casting frightening glances at each other. They both looked terrified. I tried to scroll down to see more, but that's where the comic strip ended. <clears throat> For a long time, I stood there, staring at the screen. My mind was doing flip-flops. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen. How could there be a new Dr. Maniac strip that I didn't draw? Did the characters I created really come to life? Sam and Brooke really disappeared. What was real and what was just a comic strip? I suddenly felt dizzy. This was too hard to figure out. My head started to ache. I ran to the head of the stairs. Mom, I shouted, come upstairs, hurry. I want to show you something. A few seconds later, Mom started up the stairs. Behind her, I saw the policeman who had been here earlier, Officer Rawls. He reached the top of the stairs and stared at me coldly. Robbie, you're in serious trouble, he said softly. Mom started to say something, but Rawls raised his hand to silence her. Then he turned back to me. Your brother and your friend have both disappeared, he said. Why did you run away this afternoon? I think you know a lot more than you're letting on. He stuck his face up close to mine. Robbie, he said, you better start talking now. If they'd had believed him earlier, they probably would have found the kids by now. But no. Chapter 19. I stepped back. I didn't run away. I said, I... Robbie, you have to tell us everything you know, Mom interrupted. Do you know where Sam and Brooke are? Do you? It's all in the comic strip, I said. Kid, we don't have time for comics now, Officer Rawls said. Tell us. Come look at this, I said. I spun away from them and started jogging to my room. This will explain everything. It's a comic strip, and I didn't draw it. It, it just appeared on my computer. They followed me into my room. I pointed at the laptop screen. Sam and Brooke are on the strip, I said. Look. They stared hard at the screen. I turned and stared too. The screen was blank, solid gray. My heart started to pound. It was there a second ago, I said. I leaned over the laptop and began scrolling up and down. Nothing. A blank screen. Officer Rawls put a hand on my shoulder. Enough about comic strips, he said. Do you want to tell us what's really going on? I don't know, I stammered. Really? Do you have any idea where the two missing kids might be? Rawls asked. In the comic strip, Doc Dr. Maniac took them to that abandoned swimming pool across town, I said. He froze the pool and turned it into an ice rink. He plans to kidnap all the kids in town and make them skate in his ice show. Officer Raw Rawls let out a long sigh. This isn't a comic book, kid, he growled. You're starting to annoy me. Do you think this is some kind of a joke? He didn't wait for my answer. He turned and lumbered down the hall and down the stairs. Mom gave me a worried glance, then she followed him downstairs. I could hear them arguing. Your son is totally mental, I heard the officer say. Comic books have gone to his brain. I heard the front door slam. Out my bedroom window, I saw Officer Rawls stomping across our front yard. He climbed into his patrol car and sped off. Am I a total wacko? I asked myself. I don't think so. I waited till Mom and Dad went out. Then I left the house. The afternoon sun was falling behind the trees. I leaned into the cool breeze as I made my way to the bus stop. I knew where that abandoned swimming pool was. I took swimming lessons there when I was in preschool. Officer Rawls didn't believe me, so I had to check it out myself. Did the comic strip tell the truth? The bus ride took nearly half an hour. It gave me a lot of time to think about my crazy plan. Was I really following a comic character that I made up? Could it really lead me to Sam and Brooke? I found myself in a neighborhood of run-down apartment buildings and abandoned stores. It didn't take long to find the old brick building that held the swimming pool. I started to the front door, then stopped. Maybe Dr. Maniac was inside. It might be a lot smarter to sneak in through the back. I remembered a back door that opened onto the pool. At the corner, a big dog was nosing around in an overturned trash can. I slipped past him and made my way to the alley and back. The building blocked out the sunlight. I walked carefully through the darkness. I grabbed the knob and tried the back door. 
To my surprise, it pulled open easily. Light poured out onto the alley. I opened the door just a crack and peeked inside. The bright glare of the white ice made me blink. Yes, the frozen pool. Just like in the strip. I pulled the door open a little wider, then I took a deep breath and crept inside. A blast of icy air greeted me. My eyes still hadn't adjusted to the glare. The yellow tilted walls glowed like sunlight. I gazed at the giant ice ring. Hey! I let out a shout when I saw the two kids. Yes, a boy and a girl skating together, leaning forward, skating away from me. Hey! I leaped onto the ice and began running after them. Sam! Brooke! It's me! I cried. They didn't turn around. Dr. Maniac suddenly appeared on the ice just ahead of me. I uttered a startled gasp. He was shorter than I'd drawn him, and his belly bulged inside his tight costume. I tried to stop and slid for four or five feet. No, I shouted as I lost my balance and fell. I landed hard on my knees and elbows on the frozen surface. Before I could scramble to my feet, a heavy net fell over me. I sent It sent me sprawling onto my stomach. My face hit and I got a mouthful of ice. I struggled onto my back. I tried to kick and thrash free, but the heavy net held me down. Sweeping his cape behind him, Dr. Maniac stood over me. He grinned down at me. Join our show, Robbie, he exclaimed. The more the merrier. Let me go, I screamed, and them too. I raised my head as Sam and Brooke skated up to me. Whoa, wait, not Sam and Brooke. Two kids, uh, two kids I've never seen before. I shoved the net with both hands and sat up. Behind the two kids, I saw a young woman gliding toward us over the ice. She had red hair and sparkling blue eyes. She wore a bright red mask, a very short red skirt over red tights, and a red top and a red cape that flowed down to her shiny red boots. The Scarlet Scarlet, Dr. Maniac cried. Glad you could join us. Where are the spotlights? The Scarlet Scarlet demanded. Where are the cameras? Where are my adoring fans? I'm trying to keep it quiet, Dr. Maniac replied, until I fill my ice rink with kids. She tossed back her long red hair. But I need a lot of attention, she said. Don't forget, I'm the Scarlet Scarlet. Don't worry, Dr. Maniac said. When our 24-hour ice show begins, you'll get lots of attention. More attention than a hamster in an encyclopedia factory. Ha 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 ha. <coughs> that didn't make any sense to me, but it made her smile. She slapped him a high five. Her long fingernails were also bright red. Still smiling, she lowered her gaze to me. Maniac, she said, I see we have a new skater. Please call me Dr. Maniac, he scolded. I have a college degree in maniacal studies. Well, who is our new skater, she asked. I'm not going to skate, I cried. I pushed at the net with all my strength. Let me out of here. You two can't get away with this. Dr. Maniac and the Scarlet Scarlet both laughed. He's a funny one, the Scarlet Scarlet said. What have you done with my brother, I screamed. Where's my friend Brooke? The Scarlet Scarlet's red smile faded. She leaned down close to me. Behind her mask, her eyes turned to ice. Just forget about them, she said. You'll never see them again.